All right, I think we'll, we'll start and then um, I think a few people might join as we go. Um, so thank you everyone for, for joining. My name is Didier, I'm uh, the technical lead for the HP developer community. And today with me for this uh, new mansion, uh, we have uh, Francois and Dietrich. The interesting thing here today is that this is the first time in our mansion learn since we started this program that we, uh, we have a, a customer actually speaking at uh, one of these sessions. And I'm very pleased that Francois from uh, Pôle emploi uh, has um, agreed to share some of the learnings about uh, their work on um, accelerating public sector AI use cases using a powerful MLOps platform. Uh, Dietrich is working for HPE and uh, he has helped in this uh, setting up that project at Pôle emploi. So both of them will be sharing the, the session in uh, just a minute before uh, I actually handed over to um, Dietrich and uh, Francois. I'd like to remind you that uh, the HP developer community uh, has two types of talks, the Mansion Learn, one of these uh, as one of these today, and this is a program we started in uh, January 21. Uh, it's a monthly program and uh, everybody is invited. It's an open uh, registration process. Uh, there is a uh, page, uh, the link is right there. And um, uh, we will copy in the chat uh, the links for you so you don't have to remember all of these. Um, so you have a calendar of upcoming events. Uh, this and, and, and more important, you have all the replay of these sessions that we, uh, we will provide um, maybe a couple of uh, days or one week after the event. So in case you missed it, um, the calendar should show a session for October 19th. Unfortunately, I don't have the definitive title yet, but it would be something about sustainability, most likely uh, from uh, people in the HP labs and uh, the office of the CTO. So stay tuned here. It should be a really good session. We also have uh, some another program called the Meetups. And this is another series that we started in 22, so January 22. And these are also uh, done on a monthly basis. And they are more like focused on a particular, in many cases, open source project. And uh, so we have had uh, a lot of um, speakers uh, from Amazon, from Red Hat, talking about particular important uh, open view, open source projects, sorry. And um, so the next one we know about is on September 28th. Uh, this is next week and it's about uh, DVC. So data version control. So about machine learning again, and this is going to be done by uh, a partner of us called Iterative. Um, so if you're interested uh, by the topic, uh, feel free to register. The page for the meetups is um, on our website, developer.hp.com slash campaign slash meetups. We also have another one for uh, October that we know about. I just put it in, uh, I I'll put it in the calendar very soon. And uh, uh, this is going to be a, a session with a partner called Paper Data. And um, this is also going to be an interesting session. And this is going to be at the end of October, uh, October 26th, if I remember right. So don't hesitate to register for those and invite your colleagues or friends or people that might be interested. In addition to, um, to uh, those talks, we also have another topic that you might find really interesting, which we call the workshops, the workshops on demand. And uh, th again, this is on our website. We have a catalog which has right now about 28 workshops that you can take 24 by seven free, uh, available to anyone. You just need an email address to register. And what these are is uh, Jupyter Notebooks workshops uh, that gets you some hands-on experience about some technology. A lot of this is open source, but not only, we have some Esmeral, uh, workshops there. We have some Redfish and ILO based right, um, OneView, all, all sorts of topics are covered there. Give it a try and provide us with feedback. Um, I think uh, it's a nice way to learn technology. And, and just the last point is this is a community. So it works only if people contribute and, and amplify the, the, the community. So join, join and invite others to join our talks. Uh, this is uh, something that we ask every time, but it'd be good to get more and more people to attend those. Um, you can also invite and join other people and invite them to join our newsletter. We send this on a monthly basis. Uh, we have right now about 3,500 people that we send that to. And it, it's a good way to keep, keep up with what, uh, what's new in the developer community, uh, new blogs, new sessions, and so on. 
We have a dedicated Slack channel where you can ask questions. This is an open to external audience Slack channel, so people can get there and ask about some of the um, platforms that we cover, some of the technology we offer, and uh, feel free to ask questions. There's a good, uh, good um, lead time for responding to questions there. When we don't know the answer, we escalate to engineering teams. So it's, uh, it's a good way to have answers on particular developer topics. Uh, we have a Twitter account, um, and also we are looking for people to contribute blogs. So if you feel like writing a blog, if you are a subject matter expert on a particular technology, whether you are inside HP or outside, we, we'd love to publish your, your contribution. So take a look. We have a, a page dedicated to how to contribute. This is entirely done through a GitHub mechanism and Markdown. So it's pretty easy and familiar for most of the developers. If you're really the, a subject matter expert, we also could deliver a meetup with you. So think about it. That could be something that you'd like to share. Um, and we can do that. We can organize that for you. We're also looking for people to help with workshops on demand. Again, if you have a subject that you'd like to build a workshop on demand for, we can help you provide the infrastructure and the content and help you with the content. So engage with the community. That's kind of the message here. With that, uh, I would like to uh, remind you that we have all those links. Uh, if you follow that QR code or you scan that with your phone, you can get to a page that has all the links that I just talked about. And uh, with that, uh, I will get uh, over to Dietrich for the real content of the session. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Didier. OK, um, thank you, Didier, for giving us uh, the opportunity to share um, what, what we did with Pôle emploi. Um, so I would like to, to, uh, to welcome uh, François Retouré from Pôle emploi and to thank him to, to, uh, to accept to, to, uh, to present uh, this feedback. So we will talk about how we work um, with Pôle emploi um, to, to develop, to, to to, to, to enable a platform to accelerate machine learning. So here is the agenda. So first, um, so maybe we should present ourselves before. So my name is Dietrich. So I'm working for HPE. I'm a solution architect. Um, I'm an expert on big data and AI platform. Um, and uh, I will let Francois present himself also. So, uh, Francois, you can present yourself. Yes, uh, I'm Francois Retouré. I work at uh, Pôle emploi in a team uh, dedicated to data science. OK. Um, so today, we will start uh, just by presenting Pôle emploi for people who don't know what is who is Pôle emploi or what they do. Uh, then we will present the AI platform <laughs> initiative. Um, we will do a demo to show you concretely uh, what we did and how it, it works and how we can accelerate a new use case uh, in production. And uh, we'll finish with lesson learned and what are the next step. Um, so Francois, I'll let you uh, start uh, with, with Pôle emploi. Okay, so uh, some words about uh, Pôle emploi. We are a, a public service. And uh, our main goals are to provide support for unemployed citizens, uh, provide an uh, unemployment benefit payment, and uh, provide intermediation between companies and job seekers. And because we have a large uh, knowledge of uh, labor market, we can share it uh, with other uh, public service. Some numbers. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, around uh, 1 million of uh, job advertisement each day on, uh, on our site. Uh, in total, uh, from uh, four years, we, we have uh, 13 millions of job advertisements published. And uh, another good number is the uh, number of, uh, of emails sent by uh, job seekers, as you can see. Our IT organization is uh, spread around uh, France. 
uh, we have one production seat, multiple development and service seats on backups, and we are around uh, 1,000. For my part, I'm uh, in Nantes on the West Coast. Uh, because of the growing numbers of uh, AI uh, use cases, we decided to, to make a code uh, of ethic. Uh, it was published in uh, April 2022. And there are, there are seven uh, topics in this code of ethic. The main one are the human centric, the discrimination, on freedom of choice. We don't want to, to repress people, in fait. we just want uh, to help all, uh, all, uh, all the users. And for the part of uh, transparency on uh, environmental impact, we have the help of, uh, in our team of, of people who make uh, a PhD thesis, actually. So Dietrich, if you want. So to... yes. Um, so now let's let's talk about uh, this AI um, platform initiative. So why uh, why do we need an AI platform, and why um, will employ currently uh, create this AI platform? So historically, um, they do have a team of data scientists, uh, which were working um, on their personal laptop. So. I think that's the common use case of a lot of customers is that uh, they have team of people working uh, in the data lake. So usually a customer already have a data lake somewhere, should be a, maybe an Hadoop uh, cluster. It should be also standard data platform like, uh, uh, like Oracle or MySQL, for example. So data scientists currently, they were just working directly from, from the personal computer. They were developing, there were training model from this computer and they were starting facing some problems. So the first problem is um, the, the, the IT department uh, is not really um, um, happy with that because you could have some data security issue because if you have, you are working on your laptop, it means that at some point, some data are going from the data lake, which is a secure zone uh, to uh, the laptop. So this means that we could have some data security if, for example, the data scientist lost his computer or, or anything like that. The second thing is that um, the, we are, they are starting to face some computing capacity, meaning that uh, when, they, when you start to build your model, you can work on a small data set and then you want to, make, you want to scale um, the training you want, so you need more capacity, you want to work on all the data available. So you will start to have some issues with your laptop because it's not powerful and you need more CPU or sometimes you will need GPU. So you, you got this issue. And the last thing is that um, working on, on the laptop is, is uh, creating some, is limiting the collaboration between the team um, because you don't have a common platform, you have to create more process to share the code, you, create, you have to create more process to share the model, to share everything you've done. So this is uh, good when you start, but at some point it's very limited and full employer were starting facing some, some of these constraints. So now the decision uh, war, was, was made to, to, to create an AI platform so we'll see the difference. The difference is that the goal of the AI platform is to create one environment uh, where the data scientists can connect from the laptop. So the idea is that they won't be, they will not uh, finally working directly, creating the model, training the model on the computer, but they will just connect to the AI platform and run all the development and all the training on this platform. The good point with that is that um, everything is running on the platform, meaning that you solve the data security problem. No data is going no more from the 
data lake to the um, data scientist computer. The second thing is that you have more computing capacity because uh, you can use, for example, we will see that we have some solution like Kubernetes. We have a Kubernetes cluster and with this kind of platform, you can uh, scale easily the computing capacity. You can add more CPU, more GPU, and also you can improve the collaboration between the team. And um, of course, with this AI platform, we will see that uh, the gain was very significant for Pôle emploi and they are now, they are now able to, to bring to a production a new model very, very fast. So please, Francois, can you go to the next slide? So how uh, HPE works with Pôle emploi? So now we'll discuss about um, how we did that, how we work together. And you can see that uh, working on this kind of project is not very simple because you have to bring on the table different people, different persona, which are working in the, in the company. So here we, we have like five group of person. So the first group was uh, the infrastructure team. So this team is mainly the team in the company which is responsible of all the infrastructure. So which OS, which, which Kubernetes version, how do we implement the security? How do we do DevOps? This is what this team do. And now this team has to work with the data scientist team, which is um, not a new team, but it's, it's uh, a team which is recently, it's taking more power in all companies because of this AI use case. So it's a team which has a responsibility to create a data science platform to, to the company uh, business team because you have more people from the business team which are now asking internally, okay, we want to do AI, we want, to, we want a platform to create a model, we do have the data, and now we need this platform. So this data scientist team has to work to create, to imagine, to create the process and to support the business team to deploy their project. And of course, uh, we do have uh, the big data team um, so historically, this team has the responsibility of the data lake. So they create all the data lake in the company. So you have all this data, all this historical data, um, all the gold of the company, which is currently uh, stored on the big data platform. And of course, um, you have to work with this team and to, to, uh, to have the connection between your data science platform from the connection between the data science platform to the, the big data team, big data team platform, so the data lake. So here uh, at HPE, we provide, of course, uh, our expertise. Um, we do have also, um, we work with uh, a new approach. Uh, we did a co-development approach with Pôle emploi, meaning that, um, we are working on Esmeral and we, 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 we decided with Pôle emploi to, to, to use Esmeral and to evolve uh, this project together. So with Pôle emploi, we completely um, use the project and evolve the project. And of course, um, this, this was very, very good because um, it helps both sides. So it helps Pôle emploi and it helps also HPE. And of course, um, I don't want to, 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 um, to tell all the story, but how we work, we, we have to put all the team together. We did workshops with the team to define what is what will be the AI platform. So of course, we have to decide which tool to use, which version of Kubernetes to use, which tool we can use, for example, for the data, uh, the machine learning governance. So we do have the choice of MLflow, for example, DVC. So we did a lot of workshop with all this team to decide what will be the future of the platform of this AI platform. Um, please, Francois, if, can you go to the next slide? So I talked before be, about the code development so this co-development between uh, Pôle emploi and HPE were very, very successful because 
um, Pôle emploi was, was already very experienced in all the DevOps. So they, they already know how to do infrastructure as code. They have a great experience around data science because they already have a lot of data scientists doing, doing data science, creating model. And what they would like is to how to scale this platform. So working together from HPE, of course, we do we do have the HPE Esmeral, we have um, all the professional services, and we also bring all the test environment. Of course, for example, at some point in this project, we need to try some, some performance, some proof of concept on GPU. So HPE provides, for example, easily a GPU platform to, to Pôle emploi to do that. So outcome of, of this, of this uh, collaboration, of this co-development, whereas, for example, in terms of feature, we do have some, the feature of external cluster import on Esmeral. So this was one of outcome of the co-development. We do work together on the ML flow and data IQ integration. And of course, we also fix some bugs on the product. So I think that's, that was very, very useful for both sides. And um, Pôle emploi, they, they, they gain uh, more on how to be more um, agile and how to be more, um, to have more reproducibility for the, their workload. For example, how can I quickly recreate entirely a data science environment? This is something also that, that we bring with this code development. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yes. So here, I, I will let Francois comment on some use case. Yes, it's just some uh, use case uh, we developed. The first one is uh, email uh, classification. If you remember correctly, we have uh, millions of, uh, of email sent by uh, job seekers and to help the advisors in Pôle emploi. We have this, uh, this use case who could uh, identify the, the job seeker, detect the purpose of the, of the email, and classify uh, emails in the, in the mailbox. It's uh, only to help the uh, advisors. Another one is uh, discrimination in job advertisement. Because we are uh, in public sector, we have to provide uh, only uh, legal job advertisement. So this uh, use case was made to detect uh, to detect a potential discrimination before publishing uh, the job advertisement. Uh, the discrimination could be uh, the common one like uh, sex, uh, race, uh, etc. On the a large part of the discrimination is for the, the labor market. We have uh, in France, we have a lot of uh, rules to follow regarding uh, labor. So this use case uh, helps uh, detect uh, discrimination uh, on all kinds. Another one is uh, CV analysis. Uh, when a new job seeker come to Pôle emploi, he had to fill in uh, a lot of forms, but if he if he send uh, if he send us uh, a curriculum vitae, we we can extract the information and uh, prefill the forms he had to fill in uh, in his process uh, when he come to to Pôle emploi. So again, uh, it helps the user uh, in boring tasks. Another one is fraud. It was, um, I think, uh, it was one of the first uh, use cases we have uh, in our team. And again, it's uh, it's to help uh, the advisors to find fraud. And uh, now we can detect uh, fraud uh, more often. Uh, on job advertisement on the recruiter space. A 
So uh, in production, we have uh, more than 10 uh, use cases uh, at this time on the, on the AI platform. We have 12 tenants for, uh, for exploration or designing a new project. Three tenants for uh, just testing, testing, PRP, testing purpose. And uh, 13 tenants for project uh, who are already in production, need uh, new training, uh, etc. On the again for tenants for uh, development uh, purpose. Uh, okay. Dietrich, if you want to yes, explain. Yes. Uh, so before going um, dive on technical implementation of what we did and what is currently in production at Pole Employ and is, is serving the use case. Uh, we just like uh, we we would like just to just to uh, to to tell to tell what is MLOps and what are our conception of MLOps lifecycle. So as you can see on on this screen, uh, you 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 see that there are that the, this is an iterative process. So you usually start with some data prep. So, so you have to connect to your data lake. So we discussed about the data lake before. You have to, to connect, to identify the data sets, to say, okay, I want to use this data. I want to, to see uh, um, the correlation between the data, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to clean the data. You have to identify the data set. And then you will go in the build phase, which is still what we call the experimental phase when you are still trying to, to build something, to, to build some model. And in this build phase, um, you will start just to, to, okay, you identify your data set, you know what you want to use, you, you have the connection to the data lake, and now you are, we will start building the model. You will start to say, okay, I want, for example, to predict, uh, to detect the fraud, as Francois said before. So you build the model, and then you train the model, and you got the model. So once you got the model, now you will go in the production phase because now let's say the model is the first version, you have a good version, which is pretty good. And you want just to, to make it available to the company, to other projects to, to start using this model. So now you will go to the production phase and the first, the first phase is to deploy the model. So you need some, some platform, some solution to take this model, to expose it uh, to, via some API and to start just to consume the model. And once the model is deployed, um, of course, uh, you need to monitor it. So you need to monitor uh, the performance of the model, how is the model uh, responding to, to the request and also how is the model, um, what is the comportment of the model? So you will have uh, all the explainability of the model, try to detect some, some behavior on the model. So this is the monitor part. And maybe on this part, you will detect that, okay, I can uh, enhance this model. I can create a version two of this model. Just be before, just because you detect some things on the monitor side, or also just because uh, you thought you get new data, and you want to feed again the model with this new data, so you will restart again, rebuild the model, train it, and deploy it. So, you 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 can see that this is an iterative process, and it's a, a never going process. So now, in the next slide, um, Francois will show you um, how they implement this MLOps platform, this AI platform? Yes. So uh, at Pôle emploi, we really like uh, infrastructure as code. So we have just installed a controller for a SMR platform. And uh, all the process will be, uh, will be as code. For example, for uh, to create a Kubernetes cluster, we use uh, only configuration files. On the product uh, Terraform and Rancher, we'll ask uh, an SDDC to have a virtual machine and uh, ask for a physical machine with a GPU. 
we remove that, it creates the Kubernetes cluster. We add uh, some uh, some plugin or operator like uh, NVIDIA GPU. And again, to to show this uh, or import this uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster into Esmeralda. Again, we use uh, we use code with a configuration file on the CI/CD system. Who ask Esmeralda to import the cluster inside the, inside it, and after always with the configuration uh, on the CI/CD system, we we can deploy uh, new tenants on the application we need uh, for the tenants with configuration of uh, all the resources like memory, disk, CPU, or GPU. So we we never use the UI of Esmeralda. We only use uh, code to make uh, all this happen. As I said, for the tenant, it's the same thing to create a, a tenant, only a configuration file the CI CD system. We ask uh, Esmeralda controller to create and deploy the new tenant. And as I said uh, before, we can uh, we can deploy uh, all the products we we need, like uh, MLflow, uh, a personal uh, an internal uh, Docker image we made with uh, all kind of tools. And again, a security system with this tenant to have a, to have a good security with uh, all the Hadoop system. And of course, they can uh, they can access uh, all the resources uh, in the network of uh, of Pôle Emploi, like Git, GitLab, all buckets on the repos repository system we have uh, at Pôle Emploi, it's uh, artifactory. When the tenant is deployed, the data scientist can connect remotely to this application and develop, uh, develop his model and train, uh, train the model, uh, eventually uh, deploy it to, uh, to the repository. Uh, talking about this, uh, this specific uh, Docker image, uh, we use uh, we use DVC to to synchronize data sets and code. I think we have a, you will have a, a presentation of a DVC uh, after. Um, so the data scientists have access to the model repository in Artifactory. Uh, you can publish a streamlit, uh, a streamlit application inside the, the tenant to show uh, to show his work to to others. Donc, all this uh, all this development phase is made from uh, with uh, remotely with VS Code. And uh, we have an open source project named uh, Gabari, who help us uh, create new projects. Uh, it's a template project for computer vision, NLP, or numeric project. It helps uh, us uh, create uh, to structure project to normalize uh, uh, model interface and uh, to develop uh, the REST uh, API or, uh, or Python li library. It's, uh, it's easy to, to have tools uh, and helpers uh, for all kinds of, uh, of part of uh, a data science uh, project 
like training and saving on deploying models, uh, etc. So how we integrate uh, the work of the data scientists, as you can see in the blue part, it's, it's the, the AI platform. So we have seen uh, data scientists can, uh, can train uh, their models. Uh, they have access to source, con to source control. So they can, uh, they can save their code uh, on, the, on the data sets they use with DVC. With this trained model, they can deploy it to a model repos repository. And uh, with that, it's all the, all the work they can do for, uh, with the AI platform. And after, on the develop platform, DevOps platform, we can take the lead to build on the and provide uh, the, the library in a, in a Python repository. And always with, uh, with this develop, uh, DevOps uh, platform, we can make a REST API, build the image with this, uh, with this code, integrate the new library, and pass all the, all the stages uh, like uh, staging tapes of uh, all kinds of tests or on the benchmark and use the model the model of the data scientist corresponding to the uh, to the library and to go to production they just have uh, we just have to promote the model on the rest api and now the all the, the REST API on the model are, can be used uh, in production. As you can see, you have uh, two, life two life cycle. Uh, if we want to train again uh, a model, the data scientist can, uh, can recreate from scratch his tenant, get uh, with DVC on the Git uh, all this code on data sets, retrain the model, if you had to redeploy it and promote it to production. And for the, for the REST API, it's the same thing. We have the same process. It's a, another life cycle, but it's, a, it's always the same process, uh, building, testing, and promotion to, to production. Um, over the time, we we keep track of uh, the time uh, we use on training models. Uh, so lab for this uh, for this use case, it was uh, document recognition uh, in local in a personal computer. It was uh, twenty nine hours. We we made some tests on uh, AWS. It was 20 minutes. For the, the first version of the, of the platform, we only have CPU. It was seven, uh, seven hours for the training time. On the second iteration of the, of the platform, when we had uh, the first GPU, uh, the training time uh, reduced to, to 20, 12 minutes. Uh, another one, the email classification we took uh, earlier. Uh, in a personal computer, we we ne never had a, a, re a good response to to make estimation or to get uh, training time. On AWS, uh, calculated it was uh, thirty hours. On the first iteration of the platform, it was a month of uh, training time. And with the last one, just, uh, just 15 uh, hours. So for the demo, okay, I will try to, 
to create a project uh, with uh, our uh, open source uh, project uh, Gabari to predict a uh, job name from a text. Uh, I will use the, the platform and uh, implement the project, get the data from Data Lake, train the model, and make a demo. Uh, the demo is made, uh, it's, a, it's a video to, because we have uh, boring parts uh, in this uh, in this demo. Uh, I can uh, I can skip it uh, or speed up uh, these boring parts. So the first time a data scientist uh, had to use uh, the platform, uh, he just have to to download uh, our connection tool. Uh, it's a connection tool made uh, with Go. And uh, you just have to, to download it. And then uh, when, you, when you run it, this connection tool uh, connects to uh, the Esmeralda platform. It check uh, all the tenants who are, who are running. And then you just have to choose uh, the tenant you need. So now for the demo, I will choose a, a proof of concept uh, tenant. And now we are connected. So we can use a uh, visual code to connect to, uh, to Esmeral now. The channel is open. We just have some uh, configuration in, uh, in Visual Code. But then you can uh, you can make a remote uh, SSH connection to this uh, to this code, and a new uh, a new Visual Code uh, is open and connected directly in the tenant on uh, our. Uh, our Python uh, application. Now I'm connected, I can uh, get the, the Gabari project. I choose here to get the sources, but uh, we can clone the project. We can, uh, we can install the Python, uh, the Python project is published on, uh, on PyPy. Once Gabberry is installed, we just have to use it. So we will generate a new project for the for the jump finder. So it's just a, a line of code. So we we will generate a new project uh, job finder in a in a directory. And now we can uh, we can work on this on this project. At this time, we can uh, synchronize uh, with Git. Uh, I didn't do it on, uh, on this demo. So if we open uh, Visual Code uh, with this uh, new directory. We will find the jump finder project with all the all the, the generation. Uh, we have a main uh, a main class. If the if the data scientist uh, want to to code itself uh, all the all the part, he can. But we generate uh, also uh, all kind of uh, of algorithm, data science algorithm, so we can use it uh, directly. Uh, we generate uh, IDE to help uh, for the statistic of data. Um, can uh, can use it, and we have uh, generate some uh, script generated to preprocess the data, make the training, 
launch prediction if you want. So now I will uh, create a new uh, new environment for uh, for Python. And uh, I will change the requirement. Uh, I think I delete uh, the torch uh, torch library and add uh, some uh, some Python library for uh, for the demo with uh, and add uh, library to get data from uh, data lake. So it's a speed up version of. Uh, Python library installation. And now the project is installed, we can, uh, the data scientist can, uh, can make his, uh, his code like he wants. So that's what I do. Uh, here is uh, the fetching of the data. Uh, I made uh, also some code to, to pre-process uh, data. And then the, the training time, I choose a, a predefined uh, algorithm because I'm not a, a data scientist. So now I can, uh, I can run uh, all these new scripts. The first one is to get the data from the data lake. So here so the point is that the data is not going to the laptop of the data scientist, but running yeah. directly on Esmeral on the AI platform. Mm. And that is a very good point in terms of security. Yes. And, uh, all of this work is made uh, remotely uh, into, uh, into our Docker, uh, Docker image. So now uh, I preprocess the, the data and uh, we can run a, a first training of the model. Or I choose to, to have uh, only three epochs for the training just to see if, uh, if it works. I do, uh, if I make a Another training with uh, more epochs to have uh, good results. As you can see in, in the left uh, corner, we have the the train models. Uh, if the data scientist is satisfied with his uh, model, he can uh, he can send it and deploy it uh, on Artifactory or any kind of repository. And now for the demo, I just use uh, just use a three minute uh, three minute application. This three minute application is uh, on Esmeral on the on the tenant uh, in the uh, in the Docker image. And the, as you can see, I can choose uh, the model I want and start uh, the demo. Uh, Yes, for this, uh, the first one I choose to the text uh, make some bread, faire du pain en français. And for the next, it was uh, plant some flowers. And uh, in each case, I, it was a little speed, but the, the model uh, gets the the right uh, the right jobs or predict uh, the right job for the text that I, uh, I put uh, 
me digit demo. I think, it, I think that's all for the for the demo. As you can yes. see, we have uh, all of this was made. Uh, it, uh, was made uh, in uh, remotely uh, on Esmeralda. And it's uh, it's really uh, it's really fast to to develop uh, like this. Yes, and I would like to to emphasize in um, on um, Gabari, so the open source project. So it's completely open source. I put the link in the chat. Um, you can go and see this project. It can really help to accelerate uh, starting of new projects. So there is some templating and you can completely uh, start a new project very quickly with this open source project. So you can see that we do have the platform and we also have framework around the platform to accelerate uh, data scientist work. So we can quickly start uh, creating a model and with the connection to the data lake, you can, you can get the data quickly and, secure, and with security and then uh, create the model. So um, now we will just share our lesson learned and maybe what, what is the next step uh, with Pole Emploi. So lesson learned, it's first one is that uh, we think that with this kind of this project, you should start simple. So um, don't try to change everything in the first. Just take, for example, one example in your company, in your organization and try to onboard this project and try to, uh, to, to run all the cycle with this project. So start very simple and try, 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 try to be uh, iterative. So one application to start first and, and then you can, you can onboard more application. Second thing is that uh, the agility is key. Um, so of course, because um, this kind of project you cannot run it like standard projects. So you have, for example, Pôle emploi, they, they use the, 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 the agile method. So they have some iteration and I think it's four weeks. I, you can correct me, Francois, but there is some iteration and they define what they want to, um, to deploy, what they want to do during this iteration. So be agile. I think it's very, very important to have this uh, kind of project management when you are running this kind of project. And um, technically speaking, the, later, the latest thing is the stateful application. So usually um, what happens is that you already have some application working somewhere uh, in your legacy, um, in your, on your legacy uh, software. So we do have Cube Director with Esmeral, which can help uh, quickly just to integrate the application as it is. So please, uh, if you do have stateful application, don't try to migrate it directly to the Kubernetes. You can just first just bring it as it is with Kube Director on Kubernetes with, with Esmera. So in terms of benefits, um, so you see that we do have a platform and the tool sets, uh, for example, Gabarit, and uh, we do have also some workflow to, 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 uh, to help the data scientists. So we have these two sets. We also manage to, um, to be in line with the security, so the corporate security. So regarding what, what, where are the data? Is the data flowing to the laptop or not? This kind of security rules. So now we are completely compliant with that. And um, the latest things is the agility. So with this kind of platform now, as you see, it's a, it's a Kubernetes platform. So we can easily um, scale the platform just by adding new nodes or new GPUs if, uh, if, if the customer want. And um, next step, next step is that we, we will still continue to improve what we call the tenant. So, for people who don't know a tenant, it's a way to create a project. So it's a way to, to allocate some resources to, to a project to work. So we will, we will improve this tenant creation. Second thing is that we are thinking of new tools. So if you are on the data science world, you should have heard about Kubeflow, for example. 
So we, we know that we should see how we can integrate Kubeflow, how we can work with Argo, for example. And the latest things uh, for the GPU users is um, when you have GPU, which is uh, costly as a resource, you want to optimize its uses, its usage, instead of, for example, uh, dedicate some GPUs to some users in a tenant. You can say, okay, I want to have a pool of GPU, and I just want to let the user use the GPU on demand. So you can optimize more the resource of the usage of the GPU. So we are exploring determine.ai, which is um, part of the, the HP portfolio now as, as a solution to, to optimize this GPU resource optimization. I think we are at the end of, of our presentation. Um, yes. So I don't know if there are some questions. So, let me check. Thank you, Dietrich and Francois. Uh, I didn't see a lot of questions in the chat and in the Q&A. Uh, I just put up a little poll for people with only three questions to answer about uh, the session. So attendees, it would be really nice if you could answer those questions for us. Um, and let's see if we get a few more questions. No questions. Oh, there were questions regarding the NLP usage. Is it based on Microsoft Exchange? Yes, it's Microsoft Exchange. So the answer is yes. Yes, I think the wrong answer to that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's a question from Valérie. Uh, how do you manage model version and model drifting? Uh, yeah, all is managed with the repository. Uh, all the all the model uh, version uh, are in uh, in the repository. Uh, in Pull we choose uh, Artifactory, and uh, we we have uh, other product who, who kept uh, information from the from the run of uh, of the model, so we can choose. Uh, what version we can use on uh, and so on. I don't know if I uh, answer correctly, but uh... let's see what Valerie says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he says okay. So I guess Francois, you did a good job. Uh, any other questions uh, before we close that call? How do you handle sensitive personalized data like birthday, et cetera? Are the data scrambled? Um, we have an uh, anonymization system yeah. okay. and directly on, uh, on the data lake. So uh, only uh, all the rights are, uh, if you are a data scientist, I think you can have some, uh, some of the data but not all, uh, and we are, uh, when we get data, uh, the personal data are, uh, are anonymized. Okay, I think that uh, probably answered the, the question. So um, if you could, uh, the ones that have not answered the poll, it would be great if you could uh, answer the three questions here, just to give us a hint if that was a, a useful session for your job. And um, otherwise, I would like to thank uh, Dietrich and Francois for, for the session. That was very useful. And uh, we'll talk to you next month. As, uh, as you've seen on Francois' demonstration, uh, DVC is... Um, is being used here and this is the session yeah. that we will have next month so it's a it's a you. great help so. okay thank you for your feedback thank you very much and talk to you in one month thank you thank you everyone bye bye, bye.